Hey guys, it's H21, and I'm back in the mix with Don't Look Back by Terry Kavanaugh. Don't Look Back is an adventure platformer that kicks off with very little backstory. You start off where the menu puts you as a generic man in front of a gravestone. You use the left and right arrow keys to move, up or Z to jump, and space or X to shoot. As you go through each area, the enemies and platforms progressively get more difficult to overcome. The areas were fairly creative and never too complex to understand, which I liked. The hitboxes for enemies were very unforgiving, but to counter the difficulty, Kavanaugh made the game without a live system. And when you died, you ended up more or less where you left off, which I also liked. If there was a life system of any sort, I probably wouldn't have bothered to complete the game. The game was fairly easy throughout, but some stages were very difficult. The first boss was pretty easy, but the last boss was an absolute mess. Most of the difficulty with him was just the enemies that he kept projecting. After time and time again, I got lucky and was able to move on. I had a feeling that this boss was where most people quit, which is a shame since after that point is when the story starts to reveal itself, but more on that later. I have to say the mechanics in this game could have been a lot better. My keystrokes only registered about 70% of the time, which was really disappointing. At times when I needed to run, jump, and shoot, my controls would tap out the most, which built up a lot of frustration on top of the initial difficulty. I remember an area where I had to jump down and fend off two enemies and I couldn't understand when the game didn't understand my keystrokes. I tried and tried over and over until I finally figured out that my character had a landing animation that it had to perform before he could jump or shoot, which was also very frustrating. Now the story on the other hand was very well done. There's no text in the game, so the story is only told through the chain of events, which was cool. If you have the patience to make it through the game, I think the ending will leave you with something to think about. I thought it was really weird that the story didn't pick up until you had killed the final boss. You kind of got the story all at once, which isn't a bad thing. I thought it was unique. Also, if you're familiar with what the story is referencing, then you'll even get more joy out of it. The graphics are okay. The color scheme is composed of virtually two tones, black and a few shades of red. Now, normally I would elude the drab colors to the story, but in this case, I don't feel like I can. The environments are lifeless and have nothing to offer. The whole setting was just boring and I didn't feel like it contributed at all. The walking animation is alright, the enemies are fine, the graphics were just really uninspired. But other than the problematic landing animation, gameplay wasn't hurt. One thing I did like was the 8-bit style of the game, but the charm did not last. I just wish that there was more to it. The music is pretty well done. When epic moments came, epic music followed. The music may not have complemented the story, but it complemented the gameplay pretty well. There are only a couple of tracks in the game, but that's all it really needed. No masterpieces here, but the tracks got the job done and they did it well. This game took me around 17 minutes to beat, 13 the second time, so knowing what you're supposed to do only helps so much. The game was just as frustrating the second time through as it was the first. The music was good, the story was very good, but they just can't pull the weight of the bad gameplay in drab graphics. Because the game gets very difficult, a lot of people probably quit before the ending, since the story doesn't pick up steam until after the most difficult part of the game. If you're the kind of person who likes to tackle challenges, then go for it. I think the story will outshine some of the frustration. However, if you want a flash game you'll really enjoy, this is not it. I just cannot recommend this game based on my experience and I think a lot of people would agree. So that's why I'm giving Don't Look Back a 5 out of 10 with the title of Average. You know, I did this review instead of looking for my Netflix disc and uh, I have no idea where that thing is.